Did you know that many medications are derived from plants? For example, salicin from willow bark is the basis for aspirin, and valeric acid from valerian root is chemically modified to make valproic acid, which psychiatrists use to treat bipolar disorder. So there's a lot of healing potential in nature, and I'm gonna tell you about three herbs that have the best evidence for treating depression. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Number one is St. John's wort. It has the strongest scientific evidence and has been tested in several clinical trials. Its effect is considered to be comparable to selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, also called SSRIs. But the St. John's wort has less side effects. The main compound responsible for the antidepressant effect is hyperisin. St. John's wort acts by increasing serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine similar to the SSRIs, and as such carries the risk of causing hypomania in some people with bipolar disorder. So you have to be careful if you have bipolar disorder and probably shouldn't take St. John's wort. It can also cause photosensitivity. What is photosensitivity? Photosensitivity means that if you take the medication, your skin is more sensitive to ultraviolet light rays. The strongest source of ultraviolet rays is the sun, but some indoor lighting, like fluorescent lights, emit a small amount of ultraviolet rays. Depending on how much of the drug you take and how sensitive you become, exposure to these light sources can cause sunburn or you can get an allergic type rash on your skin. It can look red like a sunburn, but it's really more of a rash. It doesn't happen to everyone, but it is something that you need to be aware of. You can protect yourself from this reaction by wearing a waterproof sunblock with an SPF of at least 30. If you do get a phototoxic reaction and it's not too severe, you can treat it with a cool compress or over-the-counter topical steroid like hydrocortisone cream. But if the problem persists or you get a lot of blistering or peeling, you should contact your health professional. Other cautions with St. John's wort is it can interact with other medications, either lowering or increasing their effect. So you don't wanna take St. John's wort with another serotonin antidepressant for fear of precipitating serotonin syndrome. I'll link a video about serotonin syndrome in the description of this video. Although St. John's wort is considered as good as prescription serotonin medications, it's still not recommended for severe depression. Severe depression would be when you're not able to perform your usual duties because maybe you can't get out of bed or you can't think very well because you're having trouble putting your thoughts together or making decisions. You're feeling hopeless. You're thinking a lot about death. You don't have to have a plan to harm yourself, but with depression, you can find yourself thinking about the benefit of being dead, even if you're not entertaining options to get there. Another sign of severe depression would be you've stopped eating, either because you've lost your appetite or eating makes you feel sick. If you're experiencing these symptoms, you should seek professional help and not try to treat yourself. One other sign of severe depression is experiencing psychotic symptoms like delusions or hallucinations. The hallucinations are typically auditory, meaning you hear things that aren't there. None of these herbs are gonna do much to rein in a psychotic depression. If you think of depression as a fire, the fire is controllable if it's only burning one or two things. A bucket of water can put that fire out. Psychotic depression would be like the fire spreading to a dry forest. You're gonna need much more than a bucket of water to put out that fire. I talk about psychotic depression in this video. Back to the list. Number two is turmeric, which is a plant in the ginger family. The active ingredient for turmeric is curcumin. Curcumin is what gives the root of the plant its yellow-orange color. Curcumin has been shown in studies to also have similar effectiveness as the SSRI antidepressants. Curcumin works differently from the way traditional antidepressants work by increasing brain-derived neurotropic factor. Brain-derived neurotropic factor is like the brain's fertilizer. It stimulates nerve growth and helps repair damaged nerve connections in your brain. 
the neuroplasticity basis of treating depression is more robust and more restorative than simply increasing levels of brain chemicals. Curcumin has other benefits. It's anti-inflammatory and reduces cortisol. Herbs that reduce cortisol are called adaptogens because they increase your resiliency and ability to recover from stress. It doesn't have many negative effects, but it does have a mild effect on blood thinning. So look out for signs of increased bleeding if you already take blood thinning medications like warfarin, aspirin, or even high doses of vitamin E. Signs of increased bleeding would include easy bruising, heavy menstrual cycles, spontaneous nosebleeds, like out of the blue, you feel blood coming out of your nose or you wake up with blood on your pillow. Bleeding gums after you brush your teeth can also be a sign that your blood is too thin. So I repeat, the blood thinning effect of curcumin is mild, but these are things you should watch out for if you're taking other blood thinning medications. I have a video on curcumin that I'll link in the description of this video. The last herb that has good scientific evidence for treating depression is saffron. This is from the plant Crocus sativus, which has these beautiful purple or violet flower petals with these deep red stigmas. If you remember your plant biology, the stigma is the tip of the part of the plant that captures pollen. The saffron is made by taking these long thready stigmas and drying them out and then making them into a spice. This saffron is not to be confused with Indian saffron. Some people refer to turmeric as Indian saffron. This saffron that I'm talking about is different. Saffron works similarly to turmeric in that it's anti-inflammatory and antioxidant. Antioxidant means that it slows or reverses the oxidation process in cells. Think of oxidation as your body's rusting process. Oxidative damage causes disease like diabetes, depression, multiple sclerosis, asthma, and even accelerated aging. Oxidative damage can alter DNA cells, which can then lead to cancer. So antioxidants are good. A good thing about curcumin and saffron is that they don't interfere with your antidepressants if you're taking them. So they may give you added antidepressant benefit and you get the additional benefit of the anti-inflammation and antioxidant properties of the plants. What makes plants so therapeutic? Plants have phytochemicals. Phytochemicals are natural compounds found in plants, and they're responsible for a lot of the health benefits that we associate with fruits, vegetables, and herbs. Plants produce these compounds for their own protection against things like insects, fungi, and even ultraviolet rays from the sun. But for us, these chemicals have a therapeutic benefit. Some examples of the phytochemicals are flavonoids, carotenoids, and alkaloids, just to name a few. Plants have several of these phytochemicals in them as opposed to a drug that will isolate one of the chemicals. So when you consume the herb, you get the full spectrum benefit of the main chemical that you're interested in, like curcumin and turmeric, and then all of the other phytochemicals that may have other anti-inflammatory or antioxidant effects. So if plant medicine is so good, why even use pharmaceuticals? Pharmaceuticals or prescription medications have the advantage of taking the active ingredient from a plant and making it more bioavailable, meaning more of it is absorbed and used by your body. The chemical alterations may extend the life of the drug so it doesn't break down and last longer in your body. Some phytochemicals in plants may only last a few hours, so if you want to get the best effect from it, you have to take it more frequently. If you like this topic of plant-based medicine, stay tuned. I plan to have more of it in the future. But also check out my mental wellness community where we will dive even deeper into these topics. In fact, for this video in the community, I have a handout that includes suggested brands and recommendations for dosing for these over-the-counter options. You can get that from mentalwellnessspace.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.